The end of the Ottoman Empire following the First World War left a vacuum of power in the Levant. Here, in this former Ottoman region, was the land of Palestine, settled by a diverse population of Christians, Muslims, and Jews alike. The power vacuum was quickly filled by France and Great Britain, who secretly drafted the Sykes-Picot Agreement of 1916, which proposed to divide the Ottoman territories between the two powers. This contradicted the earlier McMahon-Hussein correspondence between 1915 to 1916, which stated that the area of Palestine, along with all of the Arabian Peninsula, would become part of a new pan-Arab nation, should the Arabs agree to help Britain defeat the Ottomans. While this occurred, the influential Zionist organization had their own designs in the area. At the Paris Peace Conference of 1919, the Zionists, led by Chaim Wiseman, proposed that a Jewish homeland be established in the Palestinian territory. Their proposed borders included what would become present-day Israel, western Jordan, southwestern Syria, and southern Lebanon. No representation was afforded to the Arabs or Palestinians residing in the territory during these discussions. For the Zionists, the settlement of Palestine was not a colonial venture, but instead a return from exile to the land of Israel, their ancient homeland. For the Palestinians, however, this distinction seemed to matter little, as Jewish immigrants began to arrive and steadily dispossess many Palestinians from their homes. Despite these concerns, the Zionists appeared to have the upper hand, thanks to the implicit approval of the British government. The most telling example of this support for Jewish settlement in Palestine occurred in 1917, when British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour sent a declaration of support to Lord Walter Rothschild, a banker, politician, and prominent Zionist leader. The nature of the Balfour Declaration would become public on November 9th of that year, when it was published in the British press. Ultimately, the final decision regarding Palestine was a blend of Zionist aspirations and British geopolitical interests. Britain's strategic aims in neighboring Egypt, especially around the Suez Canal, aligned with the Zionist vision for a Jewish homeland. This shared vision led to the creation of the British-controlled Mandatory Palestine, which encompassed the territories of modern-day Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. As the years under British governance rolled on, discord between the Jewish and Arab communities soon broke out, with each side nurturing national aspirations that often clashed. The Balfour Declaration of 1917 continued to fuel Zionist immigration and land purchases, exacerbating tensions with the indigenous Arab population. In 1936, these tensions exploded with the Arab revolt against both the British Mandate and Jewish immigrants settling in the region. In an attempt to quell the unrest, the British proposed several solutions, including the partition of Palestine into separate Jewish and Arab states. The proposed borders gave the Jewish state about one-third of Palestine, including the Galilee, the Jezreel Valley, and the coastal plain while the Arab state received Judea, Samaria, and the Negev Desert. However, the plan was met with mixed reactions. The Jewish community was divided, but more inclined toward acceptance, while Arab leaders denounced the proposal, refusing the idea of land partition and population transfer. While the seeds for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict were planted in the aftermath of the First World War, the recent violence is the result of decades of deep mistrust and animosity between both sides. Creating an objective documentary on the history behind these events is a daunting task for creators who want to convey the facts without bias, especially when information and disinformation is being disseminated so quickly through social media. An example of this is when Israel attacked the Al-Shifa hospital in November because the IDF claimed it was a Hamas hideout. Over a hundred news sources reported on this, but chances are you just saw one headline about it. With our sponsor, Ground News, I can compare every single article on this story from a variety of sources around the world. Beside every headline is a rating for political bias, reliability, and ownership of the source. These are meant to be a guide, generated using three independent news monitoring organizations to give you an idea of the spectrum of coverage on the topic. Compare this 
this left-leaning headline to this right-leaning source, see the major differences in how they frame the story? Ground News gives you access to information in one place so you can think critically about what's reported and how it's reported. I believe Ground News is a useful tool if you're looking to be well informed. Support us by visiting ground.news slash armchair. Pro subscriptions cost less than $1 a month or save 40% off unlimited access with the Vantage subscription, which is what I use. Thank you to Ground News for making this video possible. In the shadow of these failed proposals, extremist factions emerged, fueled by deep-seated grievances. Jewish groups like the Ergun and Stern Gang orchestrated terrorist attacks against British and Arab targets, aiming to expedite a Jewish state's establishment. Concurrently, Arab extremists retaliated with groups like the Arab Higher Committee and later the Holy War Army, aiming to counter Jewish insurgents and challenge British rule. The 1940s witness an escalating spiral of violence, with both Jews and Palestinians employing terrorism as a means to further their respective nationalist agendas. In the aftermath of the Holocaust, which had convinced many Jews that they could never be safe without their own state, the United Nations proposed a two-state solution in 1947, envisioning separate Jewish and Arab states. The plan designated the Fertile Galilee region, the Coastal Plain, and the Negev Desert to the proposed Jewish state. Conversely, the hill regions of Judea and Samaria, along with the coastal Gaza Strip, were allocated to the proposed Arab state. Jerusalem, holding religious significance for both communities, was to be an international city. These allocations aimed to distribute the land based on demographic and agricultural considerations, but significantly altered the existing territorial status quo, fueling tensions further. The Jewish leadership accepted the proposal, seeing it as a step toward an independent Jewish state. However, the Arab leadership rejected it outright, refusing to recognize any partition of the territory and the separation of its peoples. Seeing few other options, Jewish leaders declared independence in 1948, establishing the State of Israel. This immediately triggered the Arab-Israeli War, as neighboring Arab states invaded to crush what they saw as a Zionist occupation. Despite the odds stacked against the Israeli defenders, the war ended in 1949 with an Israeli victory, establishing the Green Line as the de facto border for the new Jewish state. The Green Line expanded Israel's territory beyond the UN's proposed boundaries, incorporating Western Galilee and a broad corridor through the Negev Desert. By the end of the war, over 700,000 Palestinians had been permanently displaced from their homeland, with many reduced to the status of refugees. This event would be known as the Nakba, or Catastrophe, by surviving Palestinians and the rest of the Arab world. Although hostilities ceased, the agreements didn't resolve the core conflict, merely pausing territorial disputes. From 1949 to 1967, the Gaza Strip was under Egyptian occupation and the West Bank under Jordanian occupation. The end of the war also saw Israel's alleged violation of the UN General Assembly Resolution 181, as it expanded beyond the UN's proposed boundaries, further souring relations with neighboring Arab states. Concurrently, border skirmishes, issues over the Straits of Tehran, and the 1956 Suez Crisis further exacerbated problems with the Arabs. Israel's probing into surrounding territories and retaliatory actions against cross-border attacks further strained relations in the region, setting the stage for June 5, 1967, when preemptive Israeli airstrikes against Egyptian airfields caused a coalition of Arab states to simultaneously declare war and attack Israel across multiple fronts. Despite being grossly outnumbered, Israel quickly launched an immediate offensive, capturing the Sinai Peninsula, Gaza Strip, West Bank, East Jerusalem, and the Golan Heights at a lightning pace. The war concluded on June 10th, marking what we now know as the Six-Day War. 
These newly acquired territories significantly expanded Israel's borders, with the Green Line being superseded by the ceasefire lines established at the end of the conflict. From 1967 onwards, new Israeli settlements would be established across the occupied territories of Gaza and the West Bank, often encroaching on Palestinian land to do so. The aftermath of the Six-Day War left a lingering tension in the region, with the Arab states seeking to recover their territories lost to Israel. These tensions eventually sparked the Yom Kippur War in 1973, where Egypt and Syria launched coordinated surprise attacks against Israel to regain the Sinai Peninsula and the Golan Heights. However, by the end of the war, Israeli forces had repelled the invasions and even advanced into Egyptian and Syrian territories beyond the pre-war lines. Despite these territorial changes during the conflict, the borders essentially returned to their pre-war status following disengagement agreements in 1974 and 1975. Even with the memories of Yom Kippur still fresh, an unprecedented moment occurred in 1978 at Camp David in the United States. Here, agreements were signed between Egyptian President Anwar Sadat and Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin, which led to a peace treaty and normalized relations the following year. Part of this treaty involved Israel returning the Sinai Peninsula to Egypt, which was finalized in 1982. Meanwhile, Israeli military rule over the West Bank transitioned to a semi-civil authority under the Israeli Ministry of Defense. Since its establishment in 1964, the Palestine Liberation Organization gained significant influence in the region. Its pursuit for Palestinian self-determination led to the Arab League officially deeming them the sole legitimate representative of the Palestinian people in 1974. This recognition marked a pivotal moment in the Palestinian struggle, as the PLO's influence began to extend into neighboring countries like Lebanon. This expansion contributed to Israel's 1982 Operation Peace for Galilee, initially aimed at expelling PLO forces from Lebanon. As the conflict rapidly escalated into an extended occupation of southern Lebanon, Israel established a security zone to thwart attacks, leading to intricate conflicts with Lebanese factions and the emergence of Hezbollah as a key political player in the region. This occupation, marked by its flagrant territorial violations, significantly impacted Israeli-Lebanese relations and the broader Middle Eastern geopolitical landscape. The Israeli presence in southern Lebanon continued for nearly two decades, marked by persistent military engagements, political backlash, as well as international scrutiny and criticism. The occupation would only end with Israel's unilateral withdrawal in 2000. However, this did not put an end to the PLO's activities within Israel and other parts of the region. The PLO's involvement in hijackings, attacks on civilians, and guerrilla warfare led countries like the United States and Israel to label it a terrorist organization during that period, though their reputation began to change over the late 1980s. The PLO's chairman, Yasser Arafat, alongside other Palestinian parties, became instrumental in setting the stage for the Oslo Accords, which aimed to transition toward more structured Palestinian self-governance and a potential two-state solution. Signed in 1993, the Oslo Accords established the Palestinian Authority, granting it limited self-rule over parts of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip for a transitional period, with the aim of achieving a final peace settlement within five years. The Accords divided the West Bank into three areas, Area A under full authority control, Area B under Palestinian civil control and Israeli security control, and Area C under full Israeli control. The Palestinian Authority was given control over most population centers in the West Bank and Gaza, while Israel retained control over Jewish settlements, military areas, and most of the natural resources. This arrangement was meant to be a stepping stone toward a two-state solution, although the subsequent Camp David negotiations in 2000 failed to establish a permanent settlement. 
the transitional period set by the Oslo Accords was complex, further exacerbated by the Second Intifada, a major Palestinian uprising from 2000 to 2005 following the failed Camp David negotiations. In 2005, shortly after the suppression of the uprising, Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon took a unilateral step to withdraw from the Gaza Strip. This evacuation involved dismantling all Israeli settlements in the Gaza Strip and four in the Northern West Bank. The disengagement was aimed at improving Israeli security, reducing friction between Israelis and Palestinians, and advancing the peace process. But Israel still retained control over Gaza's airspace, territorial waters, and border crossings, except for the land border with Egypt, which is controlled by Egypt and the Palestinian Authority. Despite the disengagement, relations did not improve. The Gaza Strip instead came under the control of Hamas in 2007, following a civil war in the region. This split the Palestinian territories de facto, with the West Bank controlled by the Palestinian National Authority and Gaza by Hamas. Ever since, conditions in Gaza have been dire due to the Israeli and Egyptian blockades aimed at limiting Hamas's influence, economic struggles, and ongoing conflict. More recently, tensions between Hamas and Israel have surged, culminating in the disastrous confrontation that began in October of this year.